Relating TMJ issues to teeth. In the second part of our TMJ tour, we showed several things that can go wrong in the TMJ. Displaced discs, slowly degenerating joints, and injuries. How do these different maladies affect the teeth? This is Doug Brown, creator of BiteFX. Over the years, we've produced hundreds of animations in collaboration with over 50 dental experts and broadcast over 100 webinars featuring leading dentists. We've amassed a tremendous amount of knowledge in the animations and webinar recordings, so we're sharing that knowledge with you in bite-sized chunks. In this video, we'll look into some of the ways TMJ issues can affect teeth. We'll do this using a combination of BiteFX animations and cases presented on BiteFX webinars. We'll consider these situations. Slow and rapid condylar deterioration. Displaced discs that are recaptured and not recaptured. And what is happening when there is an unstable joint, one that is changing over time? Why is the relationship between TMJ issues and teeth important? Let's first hear what Dr. Mark Piper, recognised as one of the leading TMJ surgeons, has to say. So the clinical implications look like this. With a mild loss of joint dimension, uh, when the patient goes into their protruded relationship and go to incisal edge position, on the joint that has less vertical height, there's less clearance of the posterior teeth. On the side where the condyle is larger and coupled underneath the disc, uh, the vertical distance between the posterior teeth is greater. And you see this patterning repeat itself over and over and over again. Here's moderate loss, uh, not mild like I just showed you, but more moderate loss. And this is the patient that I showed you before. And in this case, uh, when she is in incisal edge position, her back teeth are touching. And so she's unable to disclude uh, the posterior teeth, but she can still touch the incisors. Dr. Piper clearly sees a joint to tooth connection. Now let's dive into more detail with a case of severe condyle and tooth breakdown described by Dr. Elaine Aube. 59-year-old lady, look at the chin. Chin is deviated to the left and it's angled. And if you look at the rami, you have a long rami on her right side and a short one on her left side. Now look at the mouth. This picture is not crooked. The mouth is crooked. This picture was taken straight. And you can assess that there, she's missing two molars back here. So the two molars on the upper left are missing. What happened? Well, if you look at her mouth, not much decay going on. No decay whatsoever from bicuspid to bicuspid. Same on the upper. She did have composite veneers here. But very limited damage here decay-wise, but she does have fissures all around. So why do these two teeth have crowns? Maybe she got decay very young on them, but maybe they actually fractured and had this type of problem. In, in any case, that's what happened here. She had amalgams, they fractured, eventually they did composite resins, she had crowns, teeth got sore, she had root canals, posts, new crowns, root fracture, extraction. Now, where did all that come from? Well, look at this. The coronoid process is way up here, and the condyle is way down there. There is no condyle left, or almost. So you have severe osteoarthritic damage. On this side, the damage is less severe. It's equal to the coronoid process but you still have a short rami, ramus here. Now, what happened to this patient is that either this was a growth defect that came from the disc displacement, or it just wore down afterwards. In any case, the, the, the occlusion shifted to her left side. And this, Doug, is what I really appreciate you presented last year in the uh, the new animation that uh, Rick Rogers and I did with you, where you actually showed this happening, and that 
it's that animation you did is just so graphic and representing what truly happens to the patients. We actually created four animations with Dr. Orbe and Dr. Rick Rogers. We separated the situations into slow deterioration of one condyle, slow deterioration of both condyles, rapid deterioration of one condyle, and rapid deterioration of both condyles. Dr. Orbe's case illustrates that separating the situations in this way is an oversimplification, as I need to show you two of the animations to explain what happened in this 59-year-old lady's mouth. Some of what we see in her mouth reflects what we see in our slow condyle deterioration animation, and some is matched by the rapid condyle deterioration animation. Clearly, the damage happened over some time, so we'll start with the slow condyle deterioration animation. If you're wondering why the text is reversed on this animation, it's because I've flipped it horizontally so it matches the side on which Dr. Orbe's patient has the shorter condyle. We can do this easily in the Bitefx software. The animation shows the condyle shortening in stages. At each stage, we show a couple of munches, opening and closing of the jaws, and you'll see the teeth and bones slowly adapting to the new position of the jaw. Obviously, in reality, the deterioration of the condyle is a continuous process, and it takes many openings and closings of the mouth over time for the teeth and maxilla to adapt. Compare the end state with the photo Dr. Orby shared of the patient. You can see why her jaw is canted and her teeth on her left side have a stepped formation. The loss of the molars is better illustrated in our rapid condyle deterioration animation. The reason this fits the patient is that one of her condyles was deteriorating more quickly than the other, and at a rate that was too fast for the adaptation process to keep up. When a condyle deteriorates more rapidly than the adaptation process can change the maxilla and mandible, this is what happens. The jaw tilts towards the side with the shortened condyle. When the jaw closes, it only connects on the rear molars on the shortened condyle side. That patient has a candid open bite and may not be able to bring many teeth together even when the jaw is brought fully forward. When asleep, and possibly even when awake, these molars will be rubbed together, causing looseness, tooth wear and breakage, which we don't show, and eventually loss of the tooth. Dr. Orbe's patient experienced this on two back teeth. If you're wondering how a condyle can deteriorate so quickly, here's one example from Dr. Drew McDonald. So let's talk about Riley. She's an example of all this. She was 11 years old, came into my office uh, to start her orthodontics, and that was right before the COVID shutdown. During the COVID shutdown, after she had already started her treatment, she did fall off her bike and had to have stitches. She had a pretty bad facial uh, injury. And essentially, you know, you'll see the effects here. So this picture is from January of 2020, prior to her fall. She came in in May with this on her left condyle. She had fallen down. And the only reason I knew about this is I saw the stitches on her face and said, hey, tell me what happened here. That Are you okay? You know, any issues? And she goes, yeah, I fell off my bike. And oh, by the way, I couldn't open my jaw for about two weeks, but it went away. So I figured it was fine. So rapid changes can happen, but you only get to see the after effects some months or years after the event. The other animations doctors Orbe and Rogers helped us create show effects when both condyles are affected. The first animation shows both condyles degenerating rapidly, which could have been initiated by injury or some other disease in the TMJ. Either way, the degeneration is happening faster than the adaptation process. The consequence is to produce an open bite which becomes more pronounced the greater the deterioration is in the condyles. With slow bilateral deterioration, the condyles are deteriorating slowly enough for the adaptation process to keep up. Although we show a stepwise deterioration process with condyles shortening a bit and then mandible and maxilla adapting to the new position, the process would be continuous with small increments of change in all components. Showing it as steps makes what is happening more visible. Instead of an open bite, you see a deep bite developing with a steep plane of occlusion. An x-ray of the teeth would show the teeth developing a forward tilt. Now a few words and examples on this from Dr. Mark Piper. Now if we take this one step more complex in a severe loss of joint dimension, you're going to show failure of anterior guidance 
and all contact is going to be on the posterior teeth. So this is just a spectrum. And we see these changes in the bite, but these changes are reflecting uh, what has happened in the TMJ Foundation. So that's a quick review of how fast and slow condyle deteriorations can affect the teeth. What happens with a displaced disc? First note that whether the disc recaptures or not makes little difference when considering the teeth, as the recapture takes place when the teeth are apart. The path of the jaw in opening and closing may look drastically different, but how the teeth contact is determined by the condyle's position as the teeth come together. Whether a disc displacement pushes the condyle slightly back, or just allows the condyle to move up in the fossa, the result is that the back teeth will contact before the rest of the teeth. And the effects on the teeth are like those we've shown in the rapid and slow condyle deterioration animations, depending on the speed of the disc position change and whether that is followed by condyle deterioration. If displaced and deformed discs are restricting movement of the condyles, all contacts will be between the back teeth, which will show increased wear. Here's a case described by Dr. Drew McDonald. This is an example with Tanner, 12-year-old little guy. He's got TMJ locking and pain for the last four years. That started at eight years old. You know, looking at his bite, his left side is very class two and his right side as well. You can see just how asymmetric he is on his pano even. And again, he's very class two and asymmetric to the left. Without treatment, Tanner would see continuing decay and instability. Good news is that Tanner had surgery to put the disc into position and saw great results. And essentially, he did have the disc repaired bilaterally. And before and after, the green is before, the red is after. Look at that growth. That is huge. In conclusion, I hope you recognize that TMJ issues can affect teeth. And that, if you're not already seeing it, you'll start looking for how certain tooth and jaw displacements are telling you that there's something happening in the TMJ that needs to be considered. Mastering these concepts will require some dedicated study in classes taught by the experts, but here's a self-study step that will greatly accelerate your learning. If you'd like to keep learning with animations like the ones you saw in this video, then we'd suggest using our study aid in conjunction with Dr. Dawson's definitive book, Functional Occlusion, From TMJ to Smile Design. The animations walk side by side each chapter to give you the best visual and content-rich learning experience to take you to a solid understanding of the TMJ and occlusion. The book is available through Amazon or through Dr. Dawson's publishing company, Widium, and the study aid is available through us. I've put the links in the description below.